In the following video, we're going to examine how to factor using a GCF. And remember, GCF stands for the greatest common factor. And so to recall what the greatest common factor is, we're going to look at how to find them with numbers. And when you learn to do them with numbers, you know, the greatest common factor, factor means, you know, it's going to be smaller. I mean, people, students usually get GCF confused with LCM, and LCM means least common multiple, meaning the numbers are going to be looking at their multiples. It's going to be increasing. GCF, you know, factors, factors are what a number breaks down into. So we want to find what our greatest common factor is of, say, 12 and 24. And so if we take a look, you know, what's the GCF of 12 and 24? What you do is you break down 12 into a product of prime numbers. And so 12 can be broken down into, let's say, 4 and 3. 3 is prime, so we're going to keep that. 4 is not prime, so we break it down even more into, say, 2 and 2. And so 12 is really the product of 2 times 2 times 3. And we do the same thing with 24. You know, 24 broken down into factors. You know, I could have, let's say, 6 and 4. Neither of these are prime, so I'm going to break them down even more. 4 is 2 times 2. 6 is 3 times 2. Now, all of these are prime, and so 24 is the product of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. And so if you want to find the GCF of 12 and 24, what you want to do is you want to see what are the ones they have the most in common. And so I see they both have two twos. and one three and so the gcf is two times two times three which is 12. and so numerically you break them down into their factors and with numbers those are prime factors and so the same thing can go for six you know six is two times three and both of those are prime we saw here that 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. Now, if I wanted to break down 36, you know, I have 36. 36 is 6 times 6. You know, 6 is not prime, so let's break it down into 2 and 3, and both of those are prime. So 36 is, you have two twos. So 2 times 2, and then 2 threes. so 3 times 3. And so you look at, you know, what is the most all of them have in common, the greatest common, the most in common. And so I see, you know, they all have 1, 2. And they all have 1, 3. And so my GCF is 2 times 3, which is 6. And so we're going to apply that with factoring quadratics. We're going to break a quadratic down into its factors, and then we're going to see which ones are appearing the most, what is their greatest common ones to find the GCF and to factor from there. In this video, we're going to apply the GCF technique to practice factoring polynomials. So in the first example, we have 9x cubed minus 3x squared. The GCF factoring out, you need to think of it as using the reverse of the distributive property. And we'll take a look at this in the first example. So again, when you want to find the GCF, let's do the coefficients first. What's the GCF of 9 and 3? 
and the GCF of 9 and 3 is 3. What's the GCF of x cubed and x squared? And so what's interesting about x cubed and x squared when you're finding the GCF of variables, you know, x cubed means x times x times x. x squared means x times x. And you want to know the, you know, the most they have in common, and they have two in common. And so x squared is the GCF of x cubed and x squared. So the interesting thing about variables is that the variable with the smaller exponent is going to be the GCF for that variable. And the reason why is in order to get x cubed, you already have to have x squared there. And so you look at the variable and the smallest exponent, and that's going to be your GCF. And so now you create, like I said, the reverse of the distributor property. You want to put your parentheses, and you kind of go backwards. You want, you know, you have 9x cubed in your final answer. So what do you multiply 3 by to get 9? And you multiply 3 by 3. You know, you have three x's. Right now, you only have two, but you want three in the total. And so you're missing one x. And so you're going to put x to the first power, which is just x. You know, what do you multiply 3 by to get negative 3? And that's negative 1. You have two x's. You know, you want two x's, so you're not going to put anything there. And so factoring out 9x cubed minus 3x squared gives us 3x squared, our GCF, times the quantity 3x minus 1. Notice when you factor out the GCF, they should not have, there should be no more factors in common on the inside. If there are, you have to go one more step further of factoring out another factor. So let's look at this one. You have 20x cubed minus 16x squared. So again, you know, what's the GCF of 20 and 16? You know, if I were to think, okay, hey, they're both even, let's just say it's 2. You know, if you factor out 2 from 20, you get 10. If you factor out 2 from 16, you get 8. You see 10 and 8 still have a factor in common. And so 2 is not the GCF then. It's a factor, but it's not the greatest common factor. And so what I want to be able to do is find the largest number. And so the largest number that 20 and 16 have in common, the greatest common factor is 4. The GCF of x cubed and x squared, grab the smallest exponent, so it's x squared. And then you do the reverse of the distributor property. You know, you have 4, you want to create 20, so you're going to multiply by 5. You have 2x's, you want 3, so you're missing 1x. You have 4, you want to get negative 16, so you're going to multiply by negative 4. You have 2x's, you want 2x's, and so you're done. So the final answer is 4x squared, our GCF, times the quantity 5x minus 4. And let's apply it. These are binomials. These are two terms. Let's apply it to a trinomial with three terms. So same idea. GCF of 8, 2, and 4. The GCF there would be a 2. You have x cubed. You have x to the first. You have x to the fifth. So the smallest exponent for x is x to the first, so x. You have y squared, y cubed, and y to the fourth, so the smallest exponent is y squared. And so your GCF is 2xy squared. And now do the reverse of the distributive property. What do you multiply 2 by to get 8, and that's 4? You have 1x, you want 3, so you're going to put 2 on the inside. You have two y's, and you want two y's, so you're just going to leave it alone. What do you multiply two by to get negative two? And that's negative one, so I'm just going to put my minus sign. You have one x, you want one x, so that's already accounted for. We're not going to put an x here. You have two y's, you want three, so you're missing one y. So we're just going to put a y. You have two, you want to create four, so you're going to multiply by a positive two. 
you have one x, you want five, so you're missing four x's. You have two y's, you want four, so you're missing two y's. And so your final answer is 2xy squared, or GCF, times the quantity 4x squared minus y plus 2x to the fourth y squared. Notice when you're factoring out a GCF, you start off with a binomial. You start off with two terms. And inside the parentheses, you're still going to have two terms. I know I had two terms here. Inside the parentheses, two terms. And this one, I had three terms. Inside the parentheses, I have three terms. So when you're factoring out the GCF, you know, you're factoring out the greatest common factor, but inside the parentheses, you're still going to have the same amount of terms. And the reason why is because you're doing the reverse of the distributive property. If I were to distribute back in, I should get the above result. So that's why the terms on the inside need to match the original amount of terms in the beginning of the problem. 